Roman historian Sallustius wrote about him, he was never second to the most educated people in respect of knowledge of Greek and Latin literature. He also differed by enormous endurance and was greedy for pleasures, but even more for glory. His enemy said that in his soul there was a lion and a fox, and the fox was more dangerous than the lion. The first dictator of Rome, Lucius Cornelius Sulla, was born in 138 BC into a noble patrician's family of modest means. All his life he showed great interest in the world of art and willingly spent his leisure time in the Bohemian society being admired by women. Sulla joined military service, obligatory for a young Roman politician, at a comparatively late age of 30. The coddled aristocrat had to serve under the command of Gaius Marius, Marius, who did not have a high level of education, was somewhat rude and flaunted his peasant origins, met Sulla rather coldly. But Lucius Cornelius soon won everybody's love by his cheerful disposition and rare bravery. During the risky negotiations with King Bacchus of Mauritania, Sulla demonstrated brilliant diplomatic abilities and persuaded the king to extradite his son-in-law, the African military leader Jugurtha. So, thanks to Sulla's firmness and prudence, the Jugurthine War ended. However, the consul Gaius Marius, who was not excessively fond of Sulla, didn't want to share the triumph with the young patrician. Afterwards, their hostility turned into an open conflict. In 92 BC, Sulla became praetor, that is, the governor, in the province of Kilikia, and three years later, he was elected consul. Then he was led to the Roman army against King Mithridates of Pontus. But the Democrats, who considered Sulla a protege of the aristocrats, dismissed him and substituted him for the aged Marius. However, the Roman legions supported Sulla. The ambitious commander directed the armies, which were loyal to him, to Rome. For the first time, the Eternal City had been taken by its own Roman army. This military campaign by Lucius Cornelius Sulla opened a new page of the Roman history. A bloody battle of the military commanders for the supreme power began. Having captured Marius and established the authority of aristocracy in the capital, Sulla, being the head of six legions, went to the east where he spent three years in battles for Greece and Asia Minor. In August of 85 BC, for the first time in military history, having used successfully his field fortifications against the surpassing enemy, Sulla managed to win Mithridates VI, Eupator, and came back with a considerable plunder. However, in his absence, Sulla's political opponents grabbed the power in Rome. The commander was declared an outlaw and subject to execution. Leading a 40,000 army, furious Sulla marched into the land of Italy, which led to the beginning of one of the bloodiest civil wars in the Roman history. After several bloody battles in the year 82 BC, Rome was taken again. This time, the victory was marked by unprecedented terror instead of the triumphal procession. 6,000 captives were executed on the first day. Retaliatory groups operated all over Italy. In some cities, all the male population was killed. A special proscription list, which included those who was out of favor with the regime, were hung on the squares. Denunciation and slander were used. The disfavored were exiled or executed. The one who gave shelter to the proscribed would be severely punished and his children and grandchildren would lose their civil rights. The proscriptions were used not only as a political weapon or for squaring of accounts with others. They became a means for becoming rich for Sulla supporters because the property of an outlawed man was bought for a song or just confiscated. Sulla and his supporters became rich. The frightened Senate proclaimed Sulla as a dictator for an unlimited term, though previously this post had been introduced only for a half of a year and only in the case of military danger.
Having achieved unlimited power, Sulla carried out the reforms directed towards strengthening of the Senate and National Assembly authority restriction. But in the year 79 BC, the omnipotent governor Lucius Cornelius Sulla declared free elections and voluntarily gave up his dictatorial powers. It came as a surprise to his contemporaries and a riddle for the historians. Having preserved a huge influence on the Roman political life, Sulla settled in his remote manor, being engaged in hunting and writing memoirs. He spent the last day of his life surrounded by his friends and relatives. Even the serious disease he had been suffering from could not deter his feeling of satisfaction, harmony, and executed debt which he experienced in the twilight of his life. Lucius Cornelius Sulla ordered to make an inscription on his grave. No friend ever surpassed him in kindness and no enemy in mischief.